Hello students. In this session, we are going to start with another chapter of the science. That is chapter 3, Fiber to Fabric. Let's see what are the different topics that we are going to study under this chapter. First is introduction. Then we will see the variety in the fabric. What, are, what different fabrics that we use to make our cloth. Under this we will study two more subtopics that is natural fibers and synthetic fibers. Then we will see some of the plant fibers like cotton and jute. Another topic is spinning of the cotton yarn. Then we will see how fabric is made from the yarn by two methods weaving and knitting method. And at the last we will see the history of the clothing material. So let's begin with this chapter. We all wear different clothes. Now as the summers are going on we tend to wear the cotton cloth. We see that our cloth are made up of different fabrics like sari. Saris can be made from cotton or the silk fabric. The In winter when we wear the sweaters or the jackets or shawls that are made from the wool. So some cloths or the fabrics are made up of different fibers. The bed sheets, blankets, curtains, tablecloth, towels are also made up of different kinds of fabric. Even the school bag and the gunny bags are made from some kind of fabric. We have seen for making cloth we need fabric. From where do we get this fabric? The fabric that we get is made from the fibers. Now in this chapter we will see how we get the fibers and what are the different sources from where we get the fibers. Now let us begin with the first topic that is fibers. Now have you ever tried to put a thread into the needle side? What you observe? Sometimes we might observe that the end of the thread is separated into a few thin strands. Isn't it? This made it difficult to pass the thread through the needle. The thin strands of the thread that we see are made up of still thinner strands called as the fibers. So that the thin strand is called as a fiber. Fabrics are made up of yarn. And yarns are further made up of fibers. So to make a fabric what we require is the fiber. The first thing that we need is the fiber. Then we have to convert this fiber into yarn. After yarn it gets converted into fabric by the different processes. Now from where do we get the fibers? The fibers of some fabric such as cotton, jute, silk and wool are obtained either from the plants or from the animals. The fibers that we get from the plants or the animals are known as natural fibers. Let's see what are the plant fibers. The cotton and the jute we get from plants. Hence they are known as the plant fibers. And wool and silk we get from the animals therefore they are known as animal fibers. From where do we get the wool? Wool is obtained from the fleece of the sheep or the goat. It can also be obtained from the hairs of the rabbit, yak and the camel. So wool we get from sheep, 
rabbits, yak and camels. And silk we get from the silk worm. Silk fibers is drawn from the cocoon of the silk worm. These were the natural fibers as we get them from either plants or animals. But some of the fibers are man-made. So they are known as synthetic fibers. For thousands of years, natural fibers were the only ones available for making fabric. From, for many time, the only the fibers that were available from the natural source were only used. But in the last 100 years or so, fibers are also made from chemical substances which are not obtained from plants or animal sources. These are called as a synthetic fibers. The fibers that we get from the chemical substances are known as synthetic fibers. What are the example of synthetic fibers? Polyester, nylon and acrylic are some of the examples of the synthetic fibers. So we have seen the two type of fibers. One is the natural fibers that we get from plants and animals. Another is the synthetic fibers that are made using a chemical substances. Now let us study some of the plant fibers. The first plant fiber that we are going to study is cotton. Cotton, have you ever made a wix for the oil lamp? What we use for making that wix? The cotton is used to make a wick which is used in the oil lamp. The cotton wool is also used for filling the mattresses, quilts or pillows. Take some cotton wool, pull it apart and look at its edges. What do you will find? You will find that the small thin strands that are made up of cotton fibers will appear. Now from where do we get this cotton? Where the cotton is grown? Cotton is grown in the fields. Cotton plants are usually grown at the places having black soil and the warm climate. So what is necessary for the cotton to grow? What conditions are necessary? Cotton is grown in the warm climate and it requires black soil for its growth. The fruit of the cotton plant are about the size of a lemon. After maturing, the balls burst open and seeds covered with the cotton fibers are seen. After the cotton plant is matured what happens the ball will burst open and the seeds which cover the cotton fibers can be seen once the cotton field is matured the field look like as it is covered with snow as the white cotton appears all over the field now from the balls cotton are usually picked by the hands we use hands to pick the cotton from its balls. Fibers are separated from the seeds by the combing process. This process is called as the ginning of the cotton. The seeds are separated from the cotton by the process known as ginning. Ginning was also traditionally done by the hands. But nowadays, machines are being used, which are the important state in India where the cotton is grown. Cotton is grown in Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Madhya Pradesh. Now, let us see the jute. From where do we get the jute? Jute fiber is obtained from the stem of the jute plant. So, 
the stem of the jute plant provide us with the jute fiber when it is cultivated jute is cultivated during the rainy season and when was cotton cultivated cotton requires warm climate in india jute is mainly grown in west bengal bihar and assam the jute plant is normally harvested when it is in the flowering stage so when the jute plant reaches the flowering stage it is harvested at that time the stems of the harvested plants are immersed in the water for a few days and the stem prod and the fibers are then separated by the hands by this way we obtain the jute the jute is used in making the gunny bags and ropes i hope you understood how we get the fibers of cotton and jute we have seen how we get these fibers now from these fibers we will make yarn to make fabrics all these fibers are first converted into yarn let's see how the spinning of the cotton yarn is done the process of making yarn from the fibers is known as spinning the process from which the fibers are converted into yarn is known as spinning what is done in this process in this process the fibers from the mass of the cotton or the wool are drawn and they are twisted together what will happen if they are twisted this brings the fibers together to form a yarn for making a yarn two simple devices are used a simple device used for spinning is a hand spindle which is commonly known as a tackle another hand operated device which is used is known as charkha charkha was popularly used by mahatma gandhi as a part of independence movement Mahatma Gandhi encouraged people to wear the clothes made of the homespun home yarn and it was termed as khadi. He boycotted the imported cloth made in the mills of the Britain. To popularize and the promote the khadi, the government of India constituted a body called as a khadi and the villages industries commission in 1956 due to which the khadi was promoted spinning of yarn on the large scale is done with the help of spinning machines so machines are used to spin the large number of yarn what happens after spinning after spinning yarns are used for making fabrics so we have seen first we get the fibers then fibers are converted into yarn by the process of spinning then these yarns are used for making fabric now let us have the look on some of the images this image represents the field of the cotton how the cotton fields look like once the cotton is grown in this image we can see how from the cotton balls the cotton is being picked by the hands the left side of the image represents the formation of the silk by the silk worms and the right side of the image represents the spinning of the yarn by the machine here is a small activity the fibers are given you have to classify them as the natural or the synthetic fibers the fibers that are given here are nylon wool cotton silk polyester 
and jeweled classify them as natural fibers or the synthetic fibers we have seen what are natural fibers the fibers that we get from plants or animals are natural fibers and synthetic fibers are those fibers that are made using the chemicals so the first one is nylon what do you think nylon is a synthetic or the natural fiber do we get nylon from plants or animals no so nylon is a synthetic fiber then is wool wool is a natural or synthetic wool is a natural fiber we get wool from animal then is cotton we have studied that cotton is a natural fiber we get cotton from cotton plant then is silk silk come from silk worms therefore silk is a natural fiber then is polyester what do you think polyester is a natural or synthetic polyester is a synthetic fiber and the last one is jute we have studied that we get jute from the stem of the jute plant so jute is a natural fiber so what are all the topics that we have studied today we have seen that the cloth is made from different fabrics from where do we get those fabrics from yarn and yarn is made from fibers from where do we get the fibers the fibers that we get from animals or plants are known as natural fibers like cotton wool silk jute and the fibers which are made using the chemicals are known as synthetic fibers example is nylon then we have studied about the cotton what are the conditions favorable for growing the cotton cotton requires warm climate and the black soil then we have seen jute jute we get from the stem of the jute plant then we have seen how yarn is made i hope all the points that we have studied today is understood to you the remaining lesson we will see in our next session